My name is HW. Thank you so much for watching Tone Junkie TV. Today, we are talking about something you must try with your tone matched IRs. Now, I'm going to push back on the popular narrative here, and I'm going to say this. You must, must, must try this uh, because um, this is, this is uh, how you are really creative and can maybe find your own sound and maybe can arrive at some really cool stuff. Um, I'm going to push back on some of the uh, narrative that I'm hearing online, which is people saying, oh, you know, the thing about tone matched IRs is if you tone match an IR, it's only accurate at that one setting. It's only really accurate at one, uh, you know, as soon as you turn any vault, any dial or something, it's not accurate to the amp anymore. You guys, what a bunch of malarkey. What a, this totally misses the point. This is, I mean, look, if you want to go on the gear page and like, you want to be technically correct, sure. But guys, what are we talking about? What are we talking about? The real question in front of us is, does this sound good? And does this sound like my Marshall Astra? Okay, so now I'm on the rock setting. If I can turn this up, I have a little bit more gain. Did I radically transform the sound of that amp? No, no. <laughs> So what are we talking about exactly? What is what is the functional purpose of serving at the altar of accuracy? Let's talk about accuracy for one minute. Hey, I got a question for everybody. If I mic up a guitar amp, okay, it has a sound, right? Well, let's let's look at popular music. Let's say I take a, a Dietzel VH4 and I mic it up. What mic am I going to choose? Well, popular. If I'm going to put up, if I'm going to turn that gain up, you know, it's really popular. Dynamic microphones. You know, and I might, uh, I, I might do, uh, maybe I'll do two dynamics or I'll do one dynamic and I'll put it on there. Why do I choose one dynamic microphone for heavier music? Because it imparts an EQ that is very defined and it shelves bass. It makes the bass tighter. You, when you mic it up, you get less low end than when you had the, than when you had, than when you're listening with your ears. You will hear less low end. That's why dynamics are great for that. If you are in a Robin Four blues band with a, where it's a three piece and you want all that low end bass and all that extra airy high end, right? Um, you would choose maybe a ribbon. You might choose a condenser, but you might popularly choose a a ribbon like a one twenty one and a five four five. Why? because you like what it imparts on the speaker. Are any of those more or less accurate? They impart completely different EQs. Which one's accurate? Accurate to what? Accurate to what? The perception of an amp in the room is no more accurate than the perception of an amp through a microphone. They are both perceptions of physical sound pressure in the air. Hello, hello, hello. Blowing some minds here. So what's the point of not moving this stuff. I don't know, but that's not the, the secret. Today, I wanna to talk about switching out tone matched IRs for other ones because microphones, preamps, everything in a signal chain is used purposefully because we like the way it sounds. And if we like the way it sounds, that means it imparts some character, some EQ that in fact means it's not accurate. It's not an accurate re re representation of the amp because it's actually imparting an EQ, and that's what an IR does. And so, uh, tone matching is just a way to impart several pieces of a signal chain into an IR that is not just the IR, but maybe is also imparting some of the uh, some of the EQ difference from an amplifier to the model that's in a unit. How is that any different than a microphone? I, this is my real question to the to the world out there. If I can tone match to a Mars Astra and make it sound like a Mars Astra, because it sounds good, you guys. It sounds killer. Look at this.
I got another thing for you. Uh, the Edge. He he famously switches out the speakers in his uh, deluxes for Celestian Blues. That's changing the IR. <laughs> in the words of the great Christoph Kemper, speakers are just analog IRs. <laughs> and that, that's what he said. I was there. He said it. And I thought, that's brilliant. That's brilliant. They really are analog impulse responses. You put in a signal, it does the same thing. So um, let's go. Why are we not switching, uh, let's say, uh, let's take another amp here. Our, our Mars JTM uh, 45100. It's this amp behind me. It's the 45100. It's Jimi Hendrix amp from uh, uh, the Monterey Pop Festival. And um, it is stellar. It has Alnico speakers because it was so early. It was the first 100 watt amp they ever made. That's why it's the Marshall JTM 45 100. They haven't even made a Plexi yet. Sounds like this. Sounds way different. <laughs> Very different speakers, very different this, very different that, very different signature on the back end, uh, different tubes, KT66s here compared to, actually the Mars Astra did have KT66s, which is cool, but um, Mars Astra, different circuit, completely different circuit. How come I don't come in here and say, you know what, this 45100, that's vibey and I'm into it, um, but it's not what I want. Um, cause it doesn't have that big, huge Marshall low end. It's got a different thing going on, right? So why don't I come in here and why don't I look at all these different IRs that I've got poking around and why don't I go, you know what? What happens? What if I put on the Mars Astra? HW? HW, don't you do it. Don't you do it, HW. You'll break all the rules. All the rules will be broken. My friend, I don't care. I came here to break rules. I came here to question paradigms and concepts. I came here so that you could try out IRs without this crazy notion that somehow if you switch an IR out, it's not accurate. Why would we rebuild the analog world in a digital world where we don't have the same analog limitations? <laughs> sounds completely different. Does it sound bad? It sounds a little more bassy than I would want it to be. So let's try this. What if we go to the Mars Astra Bright? So here's the bright switch on on the Mars Astra. This was created. So now, now let's listen to that. Does it sound different? Now I hear, I'll tell you what I hear now. I hear brightness. I hear a different speaker than we had before, and I hear the more crumbly nature of the JTM 45 model. Beautiful. Now, let me come in here and let's go, what if I take the bass down? Guys, that still has the crumbly nature of the JTM 45. Uh, and that's coming from the model. It now has brightness, more brightness. I've taken the bass down. Does this sound like that amp with the Mars Astra back end? I don't know exactly. But I hear elements of all those things. It doesn't sound like the Mars Astra. It sounds like the JTM 45 100 uh, uh, with, uh, with some other stuff right? 
or actually not even the 100. It now sounds like the JTM 45 model um, with the Mars Astra back end, you know, or, or, or the IR with some, now there's some EQ on it. But my question is, is that EQ really different than moving a microphone? Maybe. Is it different than uh, adding a different preamp? Is it different than adding a little different EQ because I like the flare on it? Is it different than doing something different? Sure, it's different than all those things, but conceptually it's just another element in a signal chain. So I think this, you gotta try moving these things around. Look, I'll go in and do one more just for fun. Um, and I'm gonna go to something completely different. And guys, some of these will sound bad. Like some of these are not gonna sound good. Um, oh man, let's try the the Dumble. Um, let's try this uh, TJ uh, Dumble V and th the Dumble Lux V. And this was a small deluxe reverb clone that had been uh, Dumble modified. All right, here we go. Could sound terrible. We have no idea. I'm not afraid. We're gonna be okay. <laughs> Oh, interesting. Super thick, super full. I'm gonna change this to VB so we get a little more brightness. By the way, look right here. I'm adding a high cut at 17, like everyone does on the Helix. It's not accurate. Well, it's not, it's not accurate. Everyone does it. We don't care about accuracy when we do that. We only care because we like to talk about, I don't know, because sometimes people like to go on the gear page or wherever and they like to make these assertions and that's fine. It's fine. But the question we should always ask is that that might be technically true, but is it useful? No. We should try things out. Try this out. my case I think that um, we 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 as guitar players are often stuck in this paradigm that everything was was correct already and we we go after accuracy and um, uh, I, I think falsely I really do um, I think the beauty of digital is being able to do things that you can't do otherwise now is the point of a tone matched IR to make an IR that you can put in your repertoire and add to any other amp um, that's not the sole purpose, but I would say for me, it's one of the purposes. Happy accidents are a part of creativity. And so kind of when I see like, I, I, and by the way, it, it's true of every modeling thing. It's not just tone matched IRs. It's, it, it's true of like, oh, if you turn the gain on the Kemper, you know, people say that same thing or, or, oh, what are, what is the, are these controls, these extra controls or where should I have the SAG control for the, for the, for the maximum this or the, or the best that? What is Ripple? Should I be doing stuff? Here's the thing, man. Digital is giving us control and options that we don't have in the analog world. So it's our choice to use them or not. So to me, the function of just applying an EQ to a sound is on ev is is part of every recorded sound you've ever heard. Trust me, like you want to talk about accuracy, if 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 imparting EQs onto a sound takes away accuracy, and so then we shouldn't use it. Does it take away accuracy? Sure, technically speaking, it does. But if that means we shouldn't use the sound, then no none of the recorded sounds you've ever heard 
You never heard Hendrix because you never heard his amp. You only heard his amp after someone EQ'd it, put it through a tape machine, that was an EQ, put it through a microphone, that was an EQ, and then later remastered it for whatever collection it came out on. You know what I'm saying? There's no guitar you're listening to anywhere, except probably on YouTube demos and like Instagram and stuff, that doesn't have post-processing. There's no finished recorded products that don't have EQ on the guitar channels. Like, trust me, there, because you'll never find a producer who's like getting paid money who isn't gonna do something to a track. There's never been a producer who listened to a track and said, no EQ necessary, I don't need to do anything. I mean, maybe, maybe. But, uh, but you know, maybe they still bounced it to a tape machine. That's, that's imparting something. We used to do that. We used to record digital and then bounce to a tape machine uh, because we liked what it did. We liked what it did to the high end. We liked what it did to the drums, to the cymbals and stuff. It was great. But uh, uh, you gotta try this with your tone matched IRs because I think you have a, a plethora of sounds here that are just killer. You know, um, come over here, try this Mars Astra with another, another thing. I'll tell you dudes, some of my favorite IRs, it's right here, the 68 PA channel J. It just, that amp is larger and f more full than other plexis. It has an extra tube gain stage because it's the PA head. And it just, you can hear it, and I swear you put that IR on anything, and it's just bigger. So I'm going to play you out with that. It's the Mars Astra, which is uh, utilizing the Plexi thing uh, with a 68 PA Channel J IR. But use any IR. And guys, it's not just tone matched IRs. Use any IR out there, any IR in the book, um, any IR that uh, has um, EQ applied to it. Um, uh, a buddy of mine, uh, 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 David Hisloff, just released a ton of great IRs, and he, he posted, here's all of the EQs he was applying with his with his uh, 500 series EQs um, that were like um, API EQs. Is that not accurate? Well, he's applying an EQ. But that was his, that's the signal chain. That's the point. He would apply that if he's playing live. He would apply that if he's recording we all the time, the whole point of recording and the recording and the science of recording and engineering, sound engineering, is to affect sound with EQ. Because it's all just EQ. And EQ is really multi-band volume. I hope that just blew your mind. I've been HW. See you later. <laughs>